picture this. You're walking around a grand country estate. You're admiring the art on the walls, the curiosities in the cabinets. Do you ever take a closer look and wonder how on earth they got there? My research looks at collections amassed in Scotland during the height of British imperialism and explores what this tells us more broadly about imperial identity, the treatment of colonised people, and generally our relationship to objects in the past and present. We know that the British Empire once covered over 25% of the world's surface. How many cultures were once forcibly part of the empire on which the sun never set? I'm looking at Scotland's major role in the colonial enterprise in India and countless other countries. We'll start the adventure not by following a white rabbit, but by following the little white bird you can see on the screen. This is Cocky the Cockatoo, transported from the dusty Australian plains to the Indian royal palaces, seized in the Indian mutiny, destined to spend his days in the cold northeast of Scotland as a prized pet of Scotsman Colonel Alexander. He stood as Alexander's symbol of a British triumph over India in 1857, alongside a seized throne, family paintings and jewellery. Looking around, we quickly notice that our colonial past sits within thousands and thousands of objects across museums, art galleries and other cultural spaces. Notably, you'll have heard of the Elgin marbles and the Benin bronzes from the British Museum. Although between headlines and displays, there are countless other examples cluttered in Scotland's shadow. I'm shining a light on examples from all over the country, illuminating to people how many stories we've yet to hear. I'm working with the National Trust for Scotland, looking in depth at their recently digitised Project Reveal database, a catalogue of every item in their collection. Never analysed before, I'm looking for case studies that help me chart patterns of acquisition, transport and display of imperial objects. Before bringing these discoveries into the present, I'm interviewing volunteers across Scotland and visitors, looking at what my research means for us today and what heritage practice means today. Will this help heal historical connection severed by conflict and reframe the relationship between man and object? The act of removing or destroying cultural heritage is a strategy of war and colonial domination. Reaching back to Mesopotamia, we've seen it recently with Daesh in Iraq and Syria, and now we see it in Ukraine with aggressors looking to erase someone's identity. They want the art, not the people but the objects we collect are important and they have a story to tell. Picture this, you're walking around a grand country estate, admiring the art on the walls and the curiosities in the cabinets. You take a closer look. You ask yourself, how on earth did this get here? Who made it? Should we give it back? And you tell yourself, this matters. Thank you.